Electrochemistry is the study of the relationship between electricity and chemical reactions. We will use our understanding of spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions to help us understand this relationship. Many chemical reactions involve transfer of electrons, which are charged particles. Since electricity also involves movement of charge, we can begin to understand that there might be a relationship between these types of reactions and electricity. To begin, we will need to understand reduction oxidation reactions, or redox reactions, which are those reactions that involve transfer of electrons. Redox reactions involve transfer of electrons from one species to another. There are two complementary processes that are involved in redox reactions. Oxidation is loss of electrons, whereas reduction is gain of electrons. You could remember these differences by the phrase oil rig, where oil is oxidation is loss, and rig stands for reduction is gain. Again, oxidation and reduction always take place in the same reaction because if something is losing electrons, there must be something else present to gain the electrons. The species that is reduced or gains the electrons is also known as the oxidizing agent since it causes another species to be oxidized. The species that is oxidized or loses electrons is also known as the reducing agent since it causes another species to be reduced. It's possible to identify oxidized or reduced species based on a change in their oxidation states. In this example, we see that calcium metal reacts with liquid water to produce aqueous calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. In this situation, the calcium metal has an oxidation state of zero, whereas on the product side, the calcium ions and calcium hydroxide have an oxidation state of plus two. This means that the calcium metal lost two electrons, and so we would say that the calcium metal on the reactant side was oxidized. We could also say that the calcium metal on the reactant side is the reducing agent. The hydrogen in water has an oxidation state of plus one. On the product side, the hydrogen atoms in hydrogen gas have an oxidation state of zero. Therefore, the hydrogen in the water gained electrons, and so we could say that the hydrogen ions in water was reduced. We could also say that the hydrogen in water is the oxidizing agent. Oxidation states, or oxidation numbers, represent the charge an atom in a compound would have if it was an ion. In molecular or covalent compounds, the more electronegative atom is treated as the anion. We can provide some guiding principles so that we can identify the oxidation states of atoms in any given compound or species. To begin with, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a given compound must equal the total charge on the overall species. In addition, hydrogen will generally have an oxidation state of plus one in a compound unless it is the more electronegative atom, such as in sodium hydride. Oxygen usually has an oxidation state of minus two in a compound. In addition, atoms in pure neutral elements have oxidation numbers of zero. Let's look at an example where we can identify the oxidation states for each atom in phosphoric acid, H3PO4. We can begin by identifying the different ions present in phosphoric acid. So we would have three hydrogen ions, and we would also have the phosphate ion, PO4, with an overall three minus charge. In this case, since we have hydrogen, and we will use our guiding principle that hydrogen is generally plus one when it's in a compound. Next, we have the phosphate ion, PO4, three minus. We can use our guiding principle to help us realize that the oxygen in phosphate is more electronegative, and so therefore, the oxygen is going to be acting like the anion. So we could assume that the oxygen has an oxidation state of two minus. Since the phosphate overall has a charge of minus three, and we also have four oxygen ions, each with a charge of minus two, then the phosphorus has to have an oxidation state such that 
when it's added to the negative 8 from the four oxygen ions, that should have an overall result of minus 3. In order to do this, this means that the oxidation state of the phosphorus must be plus 5. So when we look at the atoms in phosphoric acid, we would indicate that the hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus 1, the phosphorus has an oxidation state of plus 5, and each oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. By now, you should be able to define oxidation and reduction. You should be able to identify oxidation states of atoms in a compound. You should also be able to identify what is oxidized or reduced in a redox reaction. And finally, you should be able to identify reducing agents or oxidizing agents in a given redox reaction.